Yo, what's going on, Tiny Clan? It is your boy King Tiny Next here, back again with another video. And as you guys can tell, I am pretty much fully recovered now. And yeah, it's been a while. And as far as the Thanos what if goes, I'm basically just gonna reset it, uh, considering how long it's been. So um, let's roll our intro, and we're gonna try and make this a movie. Azuku Midoriya, he didn't necessarily have the nicest childhood out there. It's kind of hard to have a nice childhood when your dad is a very infamous villain. When I say infamous, I mean this is Thanos that we're talking about. Azuku's father's name was Thanos, literally named after the Greek god of death, Thanatos. And of course, he seemed to carry this name in stride. Thanos was known for many murders throughout the years. He was uh, well known for basically being a criminal. Well known for being so strong that most pro heroes couldn't even hold him down. He had been on the run for decades at this point. But nobody could really hold him down. The only people that might have had a chance was maybe people like All Might. But even then, some people were skeptical. People had always theorized what would happen if there was a fight between All Might and Thanos. Each time that they may have gotten close to a fight, something else would end up happening. Something that would disrupt their fight from really happening somehow, some way. And Thanos would always get away. People always theorize that, hey, All Might is probably the only hero strong enough to deal with Thanos, while others, they said that maybe All Might isn't even that strong. Maybe Thanos is even stronger than All Might, which some people found hard to believe, but with everything that had been seen so far, there might be some evidence towards that. And then there would be news about Azuku's birth in this world. Of course, Azuku wouldn't have a normal childhood when his father is literally that well known. Many people always theorize that if Thanos were to ever have a kid, and that kid would be a monster. They needed to put them down immediately. And of course, that's exactly what would have happened. Azuku, throughout most of his childhood, he was basically on a run from many people that wanted to kill him, all because of the fact that his dad was Thanos. His mother, Inko, she thought that Thanos wasn't really that bad. Well, that's not true actually. You see, that's just what Inko would usually tell Azuku. She thought that Thanos wasn't as bad as many people put him out to be, but behind closed doors, even behind closed doors for Azuku actually, Inko would usually cry herself to sleep. She didn't hate her child, not at all. Uh, she knew that he was innocent. She knew that he had nothing to do with this. It's just the fact that every time she saw her child, she would have to keep up a brave face. Knowing that the whole reason for Izuku's birth wasn't because of the two consenting adults or anything. No, this you probably already know where I'm going with this actually. Basically, Izuku was conceived after, well, Thanos essentially forced himself onto Inko one night. Uh, one night when she wasn't in the best mental state and Thanos was looking for a quick fix. Of course, she wanted to run away. She tried to push him off of her. She tried basically everything. She even tried to use her quirk on him, but eventually she realized that all hope was lost as soon as she saw his face. At that moment, she completely gave up. She completely lost her will to fight against this guy because of the fact that she knew 
if she continues to struggle, there might be a chance that she would die that night. So instead, she would have just given herself up. She didn't want this or anything, but instead, she just decided that it would be better to still be alive than to, well, and die tonight rather than be another one of, well, Thanos' statistics. Maybe if she did have a child as well from this guy, for all she knew, they could probably raise him to be better than Thanos ever was. Maybe, just maybe, and this was what Inko was hoping, Azuku would grow up to be a fine hero. Azuku could grow up to be incredibly strong to the point where he could maybe put down his father. Well, she didn't even really consider Thanos to be a father in a sense. She just figured that maybe one, one, maybe one day Azuku would be able to get revenge for her. That's all that she was hoping. Or maybe one day All Might could defeat Thanos himself. Maybe All Might could eventually find and defeat Thanos. And then he would be brought to justice maybe even be given a death penalty for all she cared. That still required many, many years though. Izuku would grow up under Inko's wing. She would have tried her best to be a good mother for Izuku, but at times she would snap. Just seeing Izuku always reminded her of what happened that night. And that time she just couldn't take it. She would lash out at Izuku, but she would try to apologize right after. After coming back to her senses, she would quickly apologize. At times she would throw glass at Izuku, but his skin was durable, incredibly durable, or, well, tough, to the point where it, it didn't necessarily harm him. It was just the action that kind of messed with him. He was confused. Why did she always seem to lash out at him like this? And like she compl she seemed to be completely normal most of the time. But then every so often she would just break out into tears. She would throw plates, glasses, all these stuff at him. And although he wasn't hate, he always questioned why. Why was this the case? And he I didn't necessarily know about his father just yet. But he would eventually find out about who his father was by the time he turned around like say Eight years old When he turned eight years old Many people would give him strange looks as soon as they went to like an ice cream parlor for his birthday Inko tried to put him in a disguise give him like a trench coat a hat or like a fedora Basically a lot of things to cover up his appearance but in order to eat ice cream, Izuku needed to remove some of the articles of clothing. He would eventually show some of his skin and people would immediately look at him differently. Many people at first thought that he just had a skin condition. Maybe that's why he was wearing all of these articles of clothing. But then as soon as he took off his hat, took off a scarf that he was wearing as well, and a pair of chains that he was wearing. Many people would actually gasp. Many people would start to throw insults at Izuku. Many people would try and rush at Izuku wanting to fight him. Many people had lost loved ones because of Thanos. And they weren't able to get revenge on him. They weren't able to do anything against Thanos for all these years. But the way they saw it. And it seemed as if Thanos had a kid, and if that was the case, this kid could turn out to be a monster just like his father. But they could also use this as their form of revenge. They could get rid of Azuku, they could let out their frustrations on this kid, all because of the fact that he had some relation to Thanos. They didn't care that Azuku didn't necessarily do anything wrong, it didn't matter, he was still related to Thanos, and therefore he needed to be punished. So many people would try to fight Azuku, many people would throw several items at Azuku, many people would even try to stab Azuku, although their knives, their, their daggers, everything would just break on on instinct, not instinct, on as soon as they got into contact with Azuku. 
all of these items they literally just broke most of the time nothing was strong enough to actually injure izuku some people would end up trying to use their quirks but their quirks were d-lister type quirks to be honest so, like essentially you could maybe grow some twigs out of the ground um congratulations yeah you literally got the end of the stick when it came on to that sort of quirk Azuku, on the other hand, he didn't just have very tough skin. He was actually incredibly strong for his age. Being able to, well, lift something that's like three times his weight, three times his size, all of that. He was able to do so much at such a young age. He even gained some of his mother's telekinesis. Of course, it was far greater than Inko's ability to just attract small objects to herself. No, Izuku was able to attract small objects, large objects, it didn't matter what size the object was, he could attract it to himself like he was a magnet or he could push them away, he could literally retract them. He literally had full scale telekinesis and that thing was constantly evolving it was growing stronger day by day azuku was growing stronger day by day he didn't understand why these people were treating him this way and azuku he would even use his telekinesis in order to make sure that these people just stop trying to hurt him stop harassing him they just looked at him in fear though as soon as he used his telekinesis on them the, ma the many people there just realized that they may have screwed up. They may genuinely just lose their lives today all because they decided to poke a sleeping beast or poke or like mess with a sleeping bear you could say. Azuku didn't want to hurt anybody though. He would question why these people were trying to hurt him so bad why couldn't they just leave him alone it was his birthday for crying out loud all he was trying to do was just eat some ice cream for his birthday Inko would have trying to have Azuku let the people down and that they should get out of here but no Azuku refused he wanted to keep talking he kept talking mentioning the fact that he did absolutely nothing wrong so why did he have to deal with these people on his birthday what did he do to them for them to hate him so much the people well one of them actually would state the reason he was born Izuku would be confused though. He was born? What did that mean? Many people would go on to actually speak up afterwards. They would say that it was his father. That was the main reason. Izuku should have never been born. Look at Thanos for crying out loud. Does he have no idea what, ha what his father has done? Azuku would be confused even more. What did his father do? Inko would have tried to rush Azuku out of the ice cream parlor, not wanting to expose him to the truth. But no, some people would go on to continue talking. They would continue talking about how Thanos had killed this many people. Some of their loved ones had been killed by Thanos. Thanos was a serial killer, a murderer. He deserved to die. And anybody in relation to Thanos deserved to die as well. They would look over to Inka and realize that they were the mother of Azuku. They would go on to, on to well, use a lot of names. They would go on to call Inko several horrendous names every single word that you could probably think of they would hurl these insults at Inko just saying that she should die she is this and that they wanted to let it be known to Inko that she was nothing but a monster just like Thanos for even having any relation to him. Anybody that had any relation to Thanos in their eyes deserved to suffer, they deserved to die, they deserved to burn in the deepest levels of hell. Inko would break into tears and she would just quickly rush Azuku out of the, well, restaurant. 
these people were continuing to hurl insults at them left and right but the Zuku didn't want to hear it anymore and he would just you know, actually begin to tighten his grip on the people many people would mention how I would scan harder to breathe many people would struggle and as soon as Inko realized this she would tell Izuku to let the people down Izuku would question why though these people were literally slandering her name they were you know, throwing all these insults and they deserve to suffer. What did they do? As far as Azuku was concerned, he had done nothing wrong. All he had done was be born. And if that was a bad thing, then what did that say about the people? These people were mentioning all of this uh, about his father, but they never mentioned anything about Azuku. As a matter of fact, Azuku wanted to learn more about his father, father though. Just why was Thanos the way he was? What were these people talking about? And talking about Thanos got rid of their loved ones. And talking about how Thanos killed their loved ones. Talking about how Thanos did this and that. All these heinous actions throughout the years. Uh, either, kill well, no matter what, he killed many people. Uh, or destroying buildings, literally committing arson. This man was pure chaos and Azuku was confused. She thought Thanos, well not she, Azuku thought Thanos was a good father or a good man. So why was it that these people were saying all of this? Inko never wanted to expose Azuku to a truth like this, but she would walk Azuku back home and explain the truth to him. You see, Thanos was not a nice person. He was not a hero, he was not some sort of agent, he was not an important person whatsoever. No, Thanos was a horrible person to say the very least. He did everything and anything for himself and his own goals. What exactly were his goals? Inka wasn't exactly sure. All she knew was that Thanos was a bad person. Some people had made rumors about how Thanos seemed to be a lunatic, somebody sick in the mind, talking about how he had seen Lady Death, how he had always wanted to get closer to Lady Death for some reason, how Lady Death encouraged him to kill all these people. Was it that he had some sort of mental disability? Talking about how he was seeing these different people, talking about uh, seeing a skeletal woman or like a skeleton wearing a cloak, but they were also a woman. Uh, talking about how they were probably the most attractive thing to him in this whole universe how he wanted to be with them and them only and in order to be with them he needed to kill everybody as some sort of gift for her many people thought that this was very, that this was very strange many people wanted to just see this man be put to justice but it seemed as if that wasn't going to happen and the way that Thanos talked it really seemed as if his main goal was literally to just kill everybody all because he was obsessed with death and if that was the case what did that say about any offspring that he might have that's why so many people hated Azuku as well they figured that Azuku was going to be nothing more than something like his father. They didn't believe that anybody related to Thanos could be good whatsoever. But, but Inko wanted to prove these people wrong. She kept Azuku because of the fact that she thought he was going to be able to make a difference in the world. She had hope, although the way that he was born wasn't in the best way. She didn't want to explain to him how exactly he was conceived. She explained that she did deeply love Azuku. She loved Azuku with all of her heart. No matter how he was born, who his father was, what these people said about him or her. 
she knew that he was going to be able to do great things one day and that's why she was giving up all all her hope for Azuku. She had all of her hope. She put all of her eggs in one basket for Azuku, all because she knew that he was going to be able to do great things one day. Whether it be that he'd become a doctor, a hero, uh, or a lawyer, or any of these things. She didn't really care. She just knew that he was going to do great things. She knew that he was special. And Azuku, hearing all of this, it was a lot to process for an eight-year-old but that day he did learn one thing though he hated his father he had a deep rooted hatred for his father ever since that day he learned that his father literally ruined his life before he was even born all because of the fact that he wanted to be a villain he he had so much potential, he could have been one of the greatest heroes out there, but no, he wanted to go around, kill people, all for his own amusement. He didn't even have a, a proper reason, he didn't have a specific goal, he just wanted to play God for some reason, control life and death for some reason, and now he was talking about uh, being with the concept of death or something. Azuku, didn't, Azuku just did not understand his father whatsoever. He didn't even re really want to call Thanos his father. And as the years went by, this hatred for his father would continue to grow. Every time Azuku watched the news, there would at least be one article, and one news story about his father and his current wrongdoings, his actions talking about how he destroyed a building, how he had caused such mass casualties. 1,000 people died today, all because of Thanos. Many people honestly saw Thanos as the worst person ever. And with the way the Hero Society was working as well, they literally started having to operate on a whole nother level. Heroes had to work incredibly more seriously all because of the fact that Thanos was around and All Might could only do so much as well. He wanted to be able to fight Thanos and put him to a stop, but it seemed as if Thanos was just a slippery eel. This man seemed to be actually rather intelligent and he was also building up some form of army as well over the years. It seemed as if Thanos' ideology managed to garner the attention of more people. More people that aligned with his ideology, the worse Hero Society seemed to get. Heroes were struggling to keep up with all of these new villains on the street. Well, streets, many people thought that these guys were just lunatics, and then the fact that they were rooting for Thanos made these people be convinced that, hey, these guys are just completely lost. These people have lost their sanity or something. These people must have been manipulated by Thanos over the years. He must have some sort of mind control quirk, mind manipulation quirk, on your sword. These people were confused. These people didn't know why anybody would ever rep for Thanos. Azuku, on the other hand, he also didn't understand why these people would rep for Thanos either. The way he saw his father, he was a villain and nothing but that. He didn't know why there would be people who would try and protect Thanos. People that wanted to be like Thanos. Anybody that wanted to be like Thanos in Azuku's eyes, they had strained far too much from the light and therefore needed to be put down as well. That's why Izuku was training his quick, training his abilities, training his physical strength speed, making sure that everything was top tier. Also, he could be able to stop his father once and for all. He knew that All Might was getting old as well, while Thanos didn't seem that he was slowing down whatsoever. All Might was barely even active anymore. He didn't know why, the man was still famous and all, but the more he looked at it, the more he realized that All Might just wasn't as, well, powerful as he once was. As powerful as, he didn't have as much longevity either. As a matter of fact, it seemed as if this man went from being able to wake 48 hours straight with no sleep, to 
only being able to work for around 3 hours a day. Most of the time he was barely even active and more stories were focused on other heroes. Barely ever All Might for the most part. Izuku was confused about it at first and then he realized that this man must have went through an injury or an angel was really starting to get at him or something. Azuka didn't know many villains who could harm All Might though, so he assumed that, well, it was probably just that he was getting old. This man had been around, uh, had been around for a long time after all, and even people like Endeavor, they were struggling to, to keep up with All Might still, so he supposed it wasn't so bad. What was bad, of course, was the fact that more regiments had to be produced in order to keep up with the destruction that Thanos and his followers were, were creating. By the time Azuka was 14 years old, he had been harassed by many of his classmates. He was always made fun of for the fact that he was the son of Thanos and one of, if not the most heinous villain in history. This man would go down in history as one of the world's most terrifying villains after all and Izuku had to just be related to him. People like Bakugo, for example, would question why Izuku existed. Why did good people have to suffer for the bad? And why did Thanos have to have a child? Why did Thanos have to be able to reproduce? Why, why couldn't this guy just be infertile? This guy's bloodline deserved to end at him. But no. Apparently, Izuku just had to be born, and Izuku, he tried to not let it, let that well haunt him. He tried to not let that affect him too much, but Izuku would eventually call on Bakugo, mentioning the fact that he has done nothing wrong. Uh, he was actually a good kid. He tried to keep his head down most of the time. He tried to be good, tried to listen to the teachers, try and do his work. He tried to not bother anybody, but then Bakugo would always use, usually usually mess with him for some reason, all because of his relation to Thanos. When in actuality, it seemed as if Bakugo was the worst of the two. Azuku would mention multiple times that Bakugo was a bully. He would usually bully people for having weaker quirks than him. Bakugo, Azuku had to admit. He had a pretty strong quirk. An explosion quirk was something pretty cool. Although, if they were really uh, considering what was consi consider considered like a flashy quirk, something befitting of a hero and something befitting of a villain, Azuku had to admit, him having telekinesis was probably better than having an explosion quirk. I mean, when you think about it, Azuku could lift rebel off of many civilians, probably save a lot of civilians at that actually. Just being able to float them over to his location and get them out of the way. But what could Bakugo do with an explosion quake? Fly maybe? And how can he help with um, some civilians? Uh, destroy the rebel? What if he accidentally injures them as well? Izuku will go on to list many, many ways that Bakugo's quirk could go wrong in a rescue situation. Sure, he could probably fight villains with this quirk, but how exactly could he save civilians with an explosion quirk? When most of the time explosions were usually connected to creating mass destruction. Sometimes mass destruction wasn't all that was needed. Sometimes there was more required in order to actually accomplish a job and Bakugo seemed to be more on the solo type at that as well. So how exactly could Bakugo be, be any sort of good hero in the future? Bakugo would be livid hearing this. He would be so upset to the point where he would honestly try to fight Izuku. He would launch an explosion at Izuku's face but Izuku would show literally no reaction. He had not been faced whatsoever by Bakugo's explosion. This was just to show that him and Bakugo were in two different categories, two different levels. Azuku was up here while Bakugo was 
down below graveling or groveling at Azuku's feet. Bakugo would be annoyed at the fact that Azuku showed no reaction whatsoever. The fact that Azuku was able to essentially just ridicule him like that and show that Bakugo wasn't as strong as he really thought he was also upset Bakugo to a very high degree to no end you could say. The teachers they wanted to do something, some of them believed that Izuku was a good student, some of them were under the belief that Izuku wasn't necessarily a bad person, all because of the fact that he was related to Thanos, this was something rather well known at this point. And Izuku, of course he had to move schools a lot in his early childhood at first. But as time, as time went on, the more Izuku showed uh, his personality, the more that people began to understand that he wasn't a bad person. Although some people were still skeptical, people such as Bakugo, of course they would use this as ammunition against Izuku every single day, basically trying to convince him that he was never going to be anything but a villain's child, all because of the fact that he was, well, Danos' son. Many people didn't want to believe that Azuku could be a hero. And then now you have these teachers who would also try and back up Bakugo as well. Some of them they didn't want to do a thing because they believed that Azuku deserved everything that was coming to him. But some teachers and students alike, they also had a change of heart over the years as far as Azuku was concerned. Some of them believed that Azuku could be a good hero. Some of them believed that Azuku was a good person. Some of them were able to look past all of, well, Danos' influence. They were willing to actually look at the person and not the father. They believed that a child should not be blamed for the father's sins. That's essentially the ideology they went by. And of course, when it came on to Azuku now, they wanted to say something. It's just that a good amount of kids and teachers alike. They were, of course, scared of Bakugo. Bakugo was known for basically having the second strongest quirk in the whole school. The only one who um, we, who basically outranked Bakugo in terms of pure raw power was, well, of course, Azuku. And even then, nobody ever saw Azuku use his quirk to its full extent ever. So many people questioned just how powerful Azuku's quirk really was. Sure, he had telekinesis, at least that was the main ability he seemed to display at the very least. But they never saw him use it as if, as if he was trying to actually fight somebody. Usually it would just be in self-defense most of the time, and even then when it came onto the self-defense part, that wasn't really all that necessary. Most of the time actually he would use it to defend others if anything, especially from people like Bakugo who would try to harass people on the daily for their weaker quirks, and people who were even quirkless at their school that claimed they wanted to be heroes. Bakugo would usually just use them as stepping stones, usually put them back in their place. Azuku, he would try and do his best in order to stop Bakugo's violence. Of course, now this was a whole nother situation. Bakugo, he wanted to show Azuku his place. He wanted to show Azuku that he was a more powerful out there too. But of course, Bakugo wasn't able to really do much. Azuku wasn't able to do much either because he knew that if he were to actually try and put his hands on Bakugo, many people would look at him in a different perspective. They would go on to hurl insults at Azuku, saying that he was going to be just like his father. Go ahead, harm Bakugo. Just do exactly what his father would do. Azuku didn't want to hear these insults or all of this ridicule, so he would just walk away from the whole situation. He would actually be excused from the class. The teacher would have allowed him to leave and Izuku would just go on to try and clear his head. After school, Izuku would simply try and pack up his bag, but Bakugo once again would try and uh, say some crude stuff to Izuku to say the very least. Always talking about his father, always talking about his mother, always talking about the fact that he can never be a true hero and the fact that Earlier in the day, the teacher mentioned that Izuku was planning on going to UA or that he was going to be applying for UA. 
Many people looked at Izuku kind of strangely, and even Bakugo was upset over the fact that Izuku was planning on going to the UA. It was mainly because of the fact that he knew Izuku actually did have a shot at getting into UA. But Bakugo believed that he was supposed to be the main character of the story, not Izuku. He was supposed to be the only one that could make it into UA out of this bad school that they were in. This was a delisted school at the very least. Bakugo was supposed to be the only one to make it into UA. This was supposed to be his hero story and Izuku being able to get into UA as well. That was basically going to mess up his whole uh, like hero history or like backstory you could say. Him being the only one to make it out of the hood you could say. Make it into like one of the best hero schools in the nation or in the world that, as a matter of fact and then being able to become the number one hero taking down the biggest bad villains ever eventually being strong enough to even take down the likes of Thanos Bakugo believed that he was going to be the one to make history he basically had a very inflated ego at this point and of course Azuku was just always there to just mess up his dreams Bakugo wanted to fight Izuku that day. He wanted to fight Izuku so bad to the point where he would actually burn Izuku's books. He would use his explosion quick in order to destroy some of the items that Izuku had on him. Izuku would question why Bakugo did this, but Bakugo would explain that villains, they didn't deserve to be treated like civilians. They did not deserve to be treated with respect. They had no rights whatsoever. Whatsoever. So really, Azuku uh, should have just kept his mouth shut. He should have never applied for UA. He should have just gone down to where his father was. Go find where his father is. Maybe join him. Go ahead, wreak some havoc. Or better yet, don't even do that. Instead, just turn yourself in to the authorities. Have them deal with you. And that's essentially what Bakugo said. Azuku would just begin to scratch his skin, annoyed at everything that Bakugo was saying. He wanted to put his hands on Bakugo, but he tried to have as much self-restraint as possible. Bakugo was pushing it though. Every single day, Bakugo seemed to push his buttons and he couldn't handle it. Azuku would just try and walk away though. Bakugo though, he today wanted to really push Azuku over the edge, he would continue to mock him, mock his mother, mention the fact that his mother was no good of a person either, mention how his father probably wanted all of this to happen to him, probably mention how he figured that Azuku was going to be just like him. And sure enough, this is exactly what Azuku was going to be. Bakugo's words, they began to strike a chord with Azuku. Eventually, Azuku couldn't handle it anymore. He wanted to walk out of the classroom. He wanted to just leave. But Bakugo's cronies, they were blocking the door. And Azuku tried to push them aside, but they kept getting back up. Azuku was eventually forced to confront Bakugo and in this way Azuku simply used his telekinesis in order to shut Bakugo's mouth. Bakugo would try to use his explosion quick in order to break out of the hole that Azuku had on him but it was ineffective. Azuku would actually slam Bakugo to the wall and Azuku would just leave right after using his telekinesis quick on both of uh, Bakugo's cronies as well, also slamming them to the wall. They wanted to use this as, as evidence against Azuku, saying that, oh, he was no good or a villain, but the cameras would have been rolling. The principal would have looked at the footage and he would have realized that no. Azuku, although it was wrong for him to use this quick, he was simply just trying to get out of the classroom. He did not want to deal with Bakugo whatsoever. The principal was actually on Azuku's side here, which Azuku was relieved about. And of course, there would have actually been the situation with the slime villain. The only thing about the slime dude though was of course the fact that Azuku had a very powerful quirk in this timeline and he was the son of Thanos, which amplified his genes to a major degree. Azuku would have seen the sludge villain and he would have realized that this guy was just a small fry. He would have simply used his telekinesis in order to, well, put some pressure on the villain, turn him into like a ball of, of I don't know why I was thinking slime, but a ball of sludge 
you could say. He basically entrapped this ledge villain in his own telekinesis and he would have used a plastic cup that he had on him in order to contain the villain. Not too long later, well, a blonde haired man would actually arrive out of the sewer hole. He would reveal himself to actually be the one known as All Might. Azuku would be awed, would be in awe actually seeing All Might. And he would actually want the man to sign to sign his book or something. He wanted to get an autograph from All Might. All Might would look at Azuku curiously though. He noticed the similarities to Thanos, but there were also some things that said that hey, he wasn't exactly Thanos for one. Thanos did not have any hair. Thanos was actually bald. Azuku had, well, purple hair. Main reason it's purple is once again because of Thanos' genes being that prominent in Azuku. And Azuku was also a lot more lanky than Thanos ever was. Thanos was more on the buff side to say the very least. Azuku, although he did have some muscle to him, it was more like a sprinter you could say. Azuku was also tall but not as tall as his father was. All Might was actually able to look down at Azuku a fair amount. All Might would question uh, what the boy's name was. Azuku would introduce himself and All Might would be pleasantly surprised. He would be revealed to the fact that, hey, although it seemed as if Thanos had a son, it doesn't appear that this kid has any other malice that Thanos has. It doesn't appear to be that the kid had any sort of influence from Thanos over the years whatsoever. It's just that, hey, um, it just so happens that he's related to Thanos. That's literally it. And in All Might's eyes, he could not necessarily fault the boy for any of his father's crimes. As far as All Might was concerned, the boy had done nothing wrong. The most he had done wrong was just using his quirk in order to defend himself against the sledge villain. And All Might would actually, well, applaud Azuku for the fact that he had such a powerful quirk to where he could contain the sledge villain in, in just that much ease, in just that limited amount of time. All Might would actually take the plastic cup that Azuku had and realize that it wasn't that great of a hold. Instead, All Might would request that Azuku place a sludge villain in, well, this soda bottle that he had on him at the time. Azuku would feel very honored actually to do such a thing, to be able to help the number one hero. Yeah, that was pretty amazing in Azuku's eyes. And of course, Azuku would also be able to get all Might's autograph before leaving as well. The two were the part ways and well the last thing All Might would mention is that Azuku he had a very good shot at becoming the hero. He hoped that maybe one day he would be able to see him uh, in the same ranks as him. Maybe Azuku could be going to somewhere like Shikitsu or UA. Azuku would actually, would actually mention that he was trying to get into UA this year. And All Might would actually be pretty happy hearing this. This meant that, well, they were going to actually have a strong hero on their side for the future. He was really hoping that maybe one day this kid could help him take down Thanos. Things were beginning to look on poor Izuku after this. You see, now that Izuku had the uh, encouraging words from All Might and the fact that the principal also believed in Izuku, he believed that he could genuinely do this. He believed that he could genuinely become a hero. So he put his all into his training for the next 10 months. Over these 10 months, he would be building his physical body, building his physical strength and his durability. His durability was already high, but he figured that if he was going to become a hero, if he was going to get into like a top hero school, then they were going to find ways to actually injure him. There were going to be ways that he had never even thought of that he would have to handle things that could never be part of his imagination his biggest dreams were to 
stand on top of the podium just like All Might be known as the number one hero but Izuku also figured that if he was going to do this and he needed to train even harder every single day as a matter of fact Izuku put those 10 months into not only his physical training but his quick training as well he already knew that he had he already knew that he had very strong telekinesis from an early age but Izuku also throughout these 10 months would discover more about himself he would have primarily been training at Dagoa Beach but he would also go on uh, go and uh, train via fighting crime as a vigilante uh, a couple of times throughout those 10 months. He would have mainly been fighting some gangsters and all of those sorts, basically people committing a whole bunch of crimes throughout the city. He knew that these guys existed, especially the followers of Thanos. And of course, Azuku would have been wearing a ski mask, a hoodie, a lot of things to basically disguise his identity. And as far as telekinesis was concerned, yeah, he had telekinesis, but that was such a common quake and to the point where you could not be able to uh, pinpoint him exactly. Even as far as appearance was concerned, he did wear a lot of things to disguise his appearance. The only thing that people could use against him against him was his height. But even then, there were people that were taller and shorter than him. People who could match his description just based off a of height alone. So Azuku figured out he was in the clear for the most part. Something that he did discover though while he was fighting crime in the night, sneaking out of his house during the night, all of this stuff, was the fact that his telekinesis wasn't just telekinesis. Apparently, while fighting crime one night, he ended up having to deal with a hostage, a hostage situation. One of the guys, they tried to use a knife against a hostage in hopes that Izuku would back down. Izuku would have tried to use his telekinesis in this moment, but instead of it just simply being that he was able to remove the knife from the person's hand, be able to loosen the grip and all of that, no, Azuku was actually able to do something surprising. Apparently, out of his hands shot some form of energy beam. He was able to reject some form of energy onto, well, the man's hand. And that energy shot basically harmed his hand to the point where he was forced to drop the knife. And his hand was stinging, he was shaking it. And the person that they were using as a hostage used this to their advantage. They were able to elbow the man in, well, the stomach, which forced them to loosen their grip entirely. And they were able to actually escape from the situation. They were able to run away. They were incredibly grateful for Izuku in this moment. And Izuku would have been surprised himself at what he was able to do. He didn't quite understand it at first, but he would try to manifest that same feeling that he had at that moment. It felt kind of itchy at first, it felt like a sort of tingling in his hand and he tried to get that same feeling once more. And that same feeling would appear once again and he would shoot more energy beams at this guy. This guy would have been incapacitated at that moment. The energy beams, they weren't strong enough to kill him just yet because of the fact that this was just Azuku's first time using these forms of abilities. He wasn't sure how to ma manifest it to the point where they were actually strong enough to actually injure a person severely. But this was a start, to say the very least, and Azuku he knew exactly just how to train his ability. Of course, for these next couple of months, he would have mainly been using the trash at Dagoa Beach as target practice. Each time, he would have tried to use his energy projection, his energy beams, in order to, well, become stronger. He would have tried to use his energy beams as a form of target practice mainly for accuracy and not only that but he was also trying to build up the strength of his well energy beams simply because of the fact that he figured that he may need to face some targets during the ua practical exams if he was going to actually fight robots for example which he had heard was something that they've done in previous years then he was going to need some serious firepower Sure, he could probably punch through metal and all that, but that would be probably time-consuming, and he, he needed to do things quick. 
and you needed to be able to do everything in the moment. So Azuka would use every single waking moment that he had in order to um, com completely have a good grasp over his abilities. Sure, he had telekinesis. That was something that he had a great control over, but his energy, his energy projection, not so much. He needed to control the output of it. At times, he would make his energy beams too big. At the times, they were too small. Sometimes, they were too weak or too strong. That was something that Azuku worked on. And he made sure that every time he used it against villains, he was confident that he would probably use it to the point where they were strong enough to injure them, but not to a point where it would literally tear a hole through their stomachs or something. This was something that Azuku had practiced for these months months upon months this was something Azuku was practicing on and of course by the end of the 10 months Azuku had felt that he was ready felt that he was confident enough to take on the UA practical exams and on the day of the UA entrance exams Azuku wouldn't have just been in his seat listening patiently to present Mike all of his instructions a kid would actually stand up at one point mentioning the fact that Hey, it seemed as if he forgot something though. Something about this fourth kind of robot, which President Mike would actually go on to explain that hey, uh, if this robot, it's a zero pointer. You don't really want to mess with that thing. You see, it's a gimmick kind of robot, so they usually some things that you just want to avoid. The main reason why we even have it in the first place is because of the fact that there are certain types of villains such as, well, the one you probably see on the news the most, Thanos, that you don't want to fight. You want to avoid this man at all costs. If you are not in like the top 10 or something, you are not to face that villain whatsoever. You need to run. You need to uh, focus on rescuing the civilians. Fighting that man is like trying to fight a tank. You cannot fight them. Azuku would flinch hearing his father's name be mentioned once more. It seemed that he could never escape the influence of his father somehow. And he would even get a look from Bakugo that he was forced to sit by during this moment as well. The fact that even heroes such as President Mike were mentioning the likes of Thanos said a lot. But Azuku, he just tried to clear his head. He didn't want to focus on that. Instead, he would just focus purely on the fact that he was going to get into UA. He needed to focus on the written and practical exam, which he actually did really well in the written exam. He, although it wasn't something that many people necessarily acknowledged, Izuku was actually rather intelligent. He was extremely intelligent, actually. And as far as the practical exam went, he was able to do phenomenal in that as well. Simply because of the fact that he had a lot of things going for him. He had his telekinesis quick, which he was able to use in order to just lift up a robot, crash it into another, and then do the same thing over and over again. But he also had his energy protect his energy projection abilities as well. He was able to shoot energy at some of the robots, shoot lasers. All of that sort at these robots and he, as a matter of fact something he had recently learned was that he could actually shoot lasers out of his eyes as well he was able to shoot plasma energy out of his eyes his mouth his hands all of these different parts of his body he could shoot it out from and azuku would have used this to his advantage and he would have used some of the well uh, rubble you could say or the scrap metal from the robots that he had destroyed in order to destroy other robots. He would have used his telekinesis and at times he would have just punched a hole through some of the robots if they were close enough. And he realized that using, well, his energy beams, they probably wouldn't be the best decision in that moment just due to the proximity between the two. And telekinesis would have been a waste of time as well. Overall, Zuku managed to make it into first place just off of pure villain points alone. 
he didn't bother trying to really rescue anybody in this situation he didn't hear anybody asking for help or anything as soon as he saw the robot he immediately ran just like the rest of the kids he wasn't about to waste his time with no well zero pointer Many teachers would actually be looking at Azuka's performance and they would have also mentioned the fact that he had quite a bit of similarities with Thanos. They would have actually looked at his records and realized that hey, this is actually the son of Thanos. This would have shocked many of the teachers, but they would have all been rooting for Azuku due to the fact that it seemed as if he was trying to become a hero. He was trying to go down the right path, he was trying to go down the hero route which meant that there was a lot of potential in this kid. As a matter of fact, with everything that Zook was displaying right now, it seemed as if he was going to become a really strong hero in the future. And one teacher in particular would have been looking at this scene and realized that this kid was going to be a headache. This teacher, of course, would have been Aizawa. Uh, of course, Azuku would have made it into UA and on the very first day, People would give Azuku some strange looks. Some people would try and say that you look kind of interesting. Many people they wanted to say a couple of things about Azuku's appearance, but others they would try and look past it. Some people had some scrutiny towards Azuku for his appearance. Others they tried to keep an open mind towards Azuku and just wait to see his actions. Wait to see what kind of character Azuku really was, rather than just being like, "Oh, you're a villain. Oh, you're this and that," all because he was related to one of the worst villains in history that was still walking around now. Essentially, Azawa, Azawa would actually enter the classroom not too long later and mention that these kids were entirely too loud. It took them way too long to actually quiet down. And he also told them to get into their PE uniforms. They were going down to uh, do some sort of practical exam, you could say, or a quick examination. Many kids, once they heard the fact that they were going to be doing some form of quirk examination, would also be kind of curious what, why are they going to be doing a test on the first day, even if it was a quirk examination? To which Azar would explain that teachers at UA, well, they had this sort of privilege, you could say. This privilege was essentially that they were able to control their classrooms. They didn't have a particular curriculum at UA. Teachers were able to teach their kids however they saw fit. And they could also expel students as well however they saw fit. If the kid was going to be a disruption to their class, they could do something about the kid. If the kid if they viewed had no potential, they could keep that kid out of UA. They could do a lot of things. The teachers had a lot of power at UA, which is why the school was so popular as well, because of this free way of learning, which many of the kids here in the fact that they could literally get expelled on the first day, this would actually kind of unnerve them to the very least. This would also encourage them to try their very best at the quick examination test. Of course, Azuku would have had literally no issue with most of the exams. The most Azuku seemed to have an issue with was, well, the speed based tests. Simply because of the fact that Azuku was on a heavier kind of side. He was on a taller side, but his father was like 985 pounds almost a thousand pounds and almost a thousand pounds and he kind of inherited that sort of density as well he wasn't as heavy as his father but he was more on the heavy side which meant that as far as running went he wasn't always going to be the very best he was more on the slow side to say the very least that wasn't necessarily the same for like fighting though of course they're just talk I'm just talking about pure raw speed, running speed. So in the end, Zuku he would have been able to out outperform most of the kids. Many of the kids would actually be impressed by Zuku's talent and well power. They figured that this kid was probably going to be somebody who was going to be 
at the very top of the class if they kept this up. Maybe some of them could catch up, but it seemed as if the only people that could really catch up to Azuka were people such as Todoroki and maybe Bakugo. But as it seemed so far, people like uh, Todoroki were the only ones that could really rival Azuku at this moment. And Azawa would even comment on this, mentioning that Azuku had very impressive stats. The uh, only thing that they probably needed to really work on was, well, the confidence and self-restraint, to say the very least. They figured that Azuku had been working on this self-restraint a lot throughout the years, considering the fact that they may have been ridiculed a lot throughout their life, which Azuku did agree with. But something that Azawa did mention though was the fact that Azuku also seemed to lack some con confidence. He noticed that Azuku would usually limit himself sometimes rather than going all out, as if he was trying to say that maybe he was kind of ashamed of his own abilities at times, which confused Aizawa. Azuku was also confused by this statement. What exactly did Aizawa mean by be by limiting himself? Aizawa would mention the fact that in some cases Azuku, uh, it seemed as if he would literally hold himself back, such as with a ball throw. Azuku probably would have easily been able to make it over into Ochako's like infinity if he really tried but instead Izuku decided to limit it to just be around like 700 or so meters just barely being able to edge out somebody along the lines of Bakugo. He figured that this may have had something to deal with some form of trauma he had as a kid maybe things that his mother would tell him as a kid always to limit himself never to use his full strength against somebody in case it might actually harm them it wasn't a bad ideology to have but when it came on to fighting villains that was going to be a whole nother story that was something that Zuko had to work on uh, well as I would mention the fact that hey it's not wrong to limit yourself in a battle, but against some top tier villains, don't feel afraid to use your full force. Don't feel afraid to go all out. You, you are a strong individual. It's okay to limit yourself, but just know when is the right time to limit yourself. That's all that needed to really be said in that moment. The next time they had to focus on their physical abilities would of course be the hero versus villains training you could say or basically combat training to say the very least and this would have actually been with All Might and All Might was apparently going to be the combat instructor for this class and many of the kids would actually be really hyped to hear this Azuku especially All Might was basically his idol growing up and he always believed that All Might was going to be the one to eventually stop his father put a stop to his father's a uh, reign of terror, you could say the very least. And All Might would actually be very happy to see that Azuku was in his class this year. All Might had very high hopes for people like Azuku in the future, and their training, their training was going to be incredibly rigorous throughout these couple of years because of the fact that people like Daniel still were around kicking, and All Might was getting weaker by the day as well. Basically, what ended up happening is that All Might would have had everybody get suited up in some costumes, hero costumes, in order to look the part of heroes. As far as Azuku went, he just kept it pretty simple. He would have worn something pretty similar to in canon, maybe like a purple jumpsuit instead of green though. And on top of that, well, he also had some gold to it as well, like a gold buckle mainly because he kind of liked the colors even when it came on to his father Thanos he had to admit that hey he had some form of style but Azuku was going to use the color scheme in order to spite his father to the very least and as far as the well uh, Hood was concerned yeah he didn't have that he didn't have like that sword of cow no instead he had a helmet instead he had some armor to his jumpsuit but 
it was mainly for aesthetics and it was meant to be an aesthetic pleaser it wasn't necessarily for actual protection because of the fact that Zuku had a whole lot of defenses already he already had tough skin he had a lot of durability he also had telekinesis which could form as a second shield to say a very least he could usually use that as, as a form of barrier and he also had his energy projection abilities as well so he could keep most of his opponents to a distance as well even if any of those other abilities were cut out uh, many people actually look at Zuku's costume and kind of compliment and mentioning the fact that it looked pretty interesting uh, some of them commented on the fact that it was very form-fitting as well and some of the guys would actually be jealous about Zuku's physique mentioning the fact that hey uh, they kind of wanted to learn a bit more about Zuku's like workout plan some of the guys and girls were begin they were actually beginning to warm up to a Zuku and of course when all might mention the fact that they were going to be doing heroes versus villains and the way that they were going about it being random one of the students one of the students either would actually question why they were going to be doing it at random to which azuk would actually point out the fact that it actually made sense you would not necessarily know who you would be dealing with as a hero and sometimes you would have to team up with other heroes and even when it came out to these heroes, they were not necessarily always compatible with each other, but you had to make the best of what you had in a moment in order to deal with villain situations. To which Ida would mention that that was a very fair point, he never really thought about, about it like that. After all of the teams were selected, Zuku would have actually been on the hero team with, well, Suyu. Uh, I the frog girl from his class and they would have actually been again been up against the uh, likes of Todoroki and well uh, Mezzo, so Mezzo Shoji basically the arm guy Although well when it came on when it came on to dealing with these guys Honestly Todoroki felt as if this was going to be an easy match. He just thought about freezing the whole area Azuku would have shown very quickly that that was going to be rather ineffective simply because of the fact that Azuku was able to break out of the ice all actually extremely easily. It barely did anything to him. And even with the cold, Azuku was able to push through it. He was able to make it to the top and Todoroki would have actually been surprised. He figured that his ice was going to be enough to deal with all of them even if Azuku was quote unquote the son of probably like the biggest villain in history, the worst villain that's been walking the earth to this day. As far as he was concerned, he had literally been bred to be able to defeat the likes of All Might and Thanos in battle. But apparently, this kid was also bred to be an incredibly strong as well. Or maybe not, not, maybe not necessarily bred. It's just a coincidence that this kid was literally the son of Thanos, somebody that he had literally been bred to defeat one day, and now this was going to be his competition for the future. Todoroki was open to the challenge. He didn't particularly like his dad, but he didn't like Thanos that much either. Uh, Thanos was probably something that he hated more than his father simply because of the fact that Thanos was known for being a ruthless villain he had no form of compassion whatsoever and seeing Zuku here was literally going to be a test of Todoroki's strength he would try to use his ice against Zuku he would try to use his ice quick against Zuku multiple times but Zuku was able to show that his physical strength just surpassed that of Todoroki's quirk. He didn't want to use his fire side whatsoever throughout this fight, but eventually uh, Azuku would, st would straight up show that holding back was going to be Todoroki's downfall. Azuku was able to get to the bomb and touch it, and solidifying his win against Todoroki. Shoji had tried to fight Azuku at one point, but Azuku was simply defending himself against Shoji. He never straight up actually attacked Shoji he simply redirected most of his attacks 
basically blocking off most of Shoji's attacks and he was able to keep Shoji down for the most part using his telekinesis. As far as Todoroki was concerned, he had used his energy projection in order to just throw Todoroki back and Izuku would have been able to, well, win in that way as well. Touching the bomb was just an absolute solidifier. And as far as all the rest of the matches went, they went pretty similar to Encanon. I'm not going over those though. Many people would actually comment on Izuku's raw strength though. The fact that he was literally able to handle Todoroki in such a way that it seems as if Todoroki was a child in comparison to him was what impressed many other students. They wondered just how strong Azuku was and if he was holding back in that match as well to which Azuku had to admit that yeah, he was. This actually struck a chord with Todoroki, the fact that Azuku was holding back in that fight and despite that he was still able to put a number in on him. The fact that no matter how hard Todoroki tried, Azuku still was able to hold the advantage the whole time. It was a two on one at that and Azuku was holding back? No. No way. You couldn't believe this. All Might reviewed the fights as, as well and he also confirmed that it looked as if Azuku was holding back. His face didn't show much struggle at all. It just showed him actually and trying to, well, keep up for the most part in terms of holding back. And it seemed as if he was trying to calculate how much strength he was trying to use throughout the fight. Many of the times that were being shown, like throughout the, basically, the, uh, basically with the footage, they would play it back and throughout the whole fight, uh, throughout the whole fight, the footage would show Izuku not necessarily even throwing punches at Todoroki or Shoji. Instead, it was mainly redirecting most of their strikes or blocking off most of their strikes. When it came onto the ice, that was pretty much the only thing Izuku really punched through or used his telekinesis against. That and of course, holding them down as well. That was literally what they were using there. Uh, using their abilities the most for not necessarily going on a full combat type of thing against these guys they weren't going on the offensive whatsoever throughout most of the fight and despite that Azuka was still able to secure a win against them all my had to admit that he was impressed and Todoroki was envious of Azuku. Bakugo was actually pretty livid. He wanted to fight Todoroki now and then eventually go up to fight Azuku. The fact that uh, the fact that these guys were considered so strong and then there was him. He felt as if he was being thrown to the back burner and then against his fight he had to go even harder to try and show that he was above them but in the end he was just since the principal's office were going too far against these kids and he needed disciplinary actions instead. Bakugo didn't find despair whatsoever. Why was he being disciplined for his actions? He had never been disciplined before, at least not so soon after. What kind of school was this? Um, Bakugo was having a reality check at this point. It seemed as if he had been coddled throughout most of his childhood and now he was finally being disciplined. He was finally being told no. It felt so bizarre to Bakugo for some reason. And for the next couple of days, this was something that would be on Bakugo's mind. Just what was up with this? What was up with this school? Why was he literally being thrown to the back burner now? Why was he, who was known for being one of, if not the strongest kid in most of his schools, the only person to ever rival him, being of course Azuku, the only person he could never really uh, make it past was always Azuku, but now there are more people uh, who seem to be above Bakugo and he couldn't handle that for some reason. He didn't understand why these kids were so strong, why was it that he was not praised for whatever he did but instead mocked, why was he instead and disciplined 
for everything that he thought was impressive? Why did he have to always try and show that he had to be the better of the two, better of the students? Why was that? He, why was it that he had to try so hard? Now he had always tried his best back in middle school or like primary school. He had always done his best to stay on top of the learning curve, but now it seems as if this learning curve was becoming too steep for Bakugo to the point where he just couldn't process it all. Even when it came on to them going for elections, basically trying to vote for who should be the class rep, they ended up going for Ida, of old people, instead of someone along the likes of Bakugo. And Bakugo thought he was pretty good in terms of being a leader. He thought he would have been a shoe in for that role. But he literally only got one vote and that vote for him. And that vote was literally from himself. Even Izuku got more votes than him. The only reason why he probably didn't even uh, make it into being like class rep was because of his relationship with um, Thanos, which some people were still very iffy about. And considering the fact that Izuku was still able to get more votes despite that, what did that say about Bakugo? This was something that he was conflicted about. Uh, and when it came on to the whole lunch situation, people thinking that, oh snap, villains managed to break into the school. Oh, all of a sudden, people were looking over to Ida and Izuku now. People were complimenting them on the fact that they were able to sail down the crowd just that easily. And being able to assess the situation that quick and be able to calm the crowd, you know, be able to to calm the crowd, calm the masses just like that, and then Bakugo was just part of the crowd as if he was an ant, as if he was just another nobody. He didn't know how to feel about that. He wanted to show that he was powerful, show that he was worthy of being seen in the same light as Azuku, worthy to be seen as somebody to be feared, somebody who, who was strong, powerful, but despite that, he was only seen as just another average kid in UA. He thought that he was going to be at the top of the class, he thought he was going to be the very best, but no, he was literally being shown to just be part of somebody else's stepping stone. This was not his story. He was not the main character of his own story, no. He was a side character and he couldn't handle that. During the USJ, many other kids, they would have actually been transported to another location after, well, finding out that there was apparently a raid on the USJ by like this villain group, they called themselves the League of Villains and they had some guy who could literally teleport to their location. Uh, they were able to send in the crowd of villains to just take over. All of a sudden these kids were basically being teleported by this missed guy as well into all these different areas of the, well, USJ where next thing you know they had to face villains in each corner. Some of them they were naturally adept to well these locations while others not so much. They actually kind of struggled in these locations. But despite that they were able to handle this th themselves when it came on to find the villains for the most part. When it came on to Bakugo he actually wanted to fight the mist guy, fight some of the villains but of course well as I would told them all to stand back, he didn't want them to get hurt. He would have actually tried to handle most of the villains himself, but eventually he was also brought down by this one villain in, in particular. Although he, he was able to erase their quirk, it seemed as if their physical strength was just on a whole nother level. And they were able to bash Aizawa's head into the concrete floor multiple times over and many other students that were still there you know, winced in pain seeing what was happening to Aizawa. They were kind of fearful. Azuku had also been teleported to another location you know, over to like the Bloodstone I believe with Tsuyu and Mineta. What ended up happening in that situation was that Azuku was simply able to use his telekinesis as a way in order to just uh, grab all of the villains and just uh, bundle them up. 
when it came on to Minata, he was able to use his spears as a form of capturing method for the villains as well. Azuka was able to use the spears that the spears are pumped out of well Minata's head, these sticky balls, in order to just connect them to the villains. Each time he was able to just take them to the villains, connect them to each other, and they were forced into one group. He laid them on the well floor and they were able to create a whirlpool at that as well from well the telekinesis that Azuku used and Azuku was also able to incapacitate the villains if he really wanted to but he chose not to in this situation instead Azuku just decided to create a whirlpool for the villains in order to just keep them trapped for a while he wasn't quite sure if they were alive or not anymore he was just concerned with the fact that he needed to protect himself and his classmates. Maybe this was what Aizawa was trying to tell him before. Maybe not try and hold back against some of the villains. Try and use your strength in order to actually help with your classmates. In order to help the other heroes. It doesn't matter sometimes the villain does die. Sometimes you need to have the villain die in order to protect the innocent. Azuku, Mineta, and Suyu, after they had dealt with the villains, they would have gone off to, well, the shore, you could say. Basically, to figure out what was happening when it came on to Aizawa and the rest of the students. And unfortunately, when they saw Aizawa, they ended up seeing this man in a very battered state, you could say. Essentially, what ended up happening to Aizawa was a whole situation with one of the villains. One of the villains was apparently called Nomu for whatever reason. They were a rather tall, muscular being, but something was off about them. Their brain was exposed, their eyes looked lifeless, and they had a beak which for some reason, that probably wasn't the weirdest part in all honesty. The brain was the weirdest part, but as I had mentioned before that he had erased their quake only for them to still be able to bash Aizawa's head in. This was extremely weird. How did they somehow manage to restrain, restrain, retain their strength? Was this just a physical ability of theirs? Were they just naturally that strong? If so, that was terrifying. He honestly was really hoping that somebody would come to save him at this moment. And sure enough, Azuku would have been the one to come to Aizawa's rescue here. Azuku was always known for his physical strength. And he was going to see the upper limits of his strength today. He would have gone on to face off against Nomu. Shigaraki would have thought that this kid was a nobody at first and would simply get crushed by the Nomu. Until Azuku ended up showing his strength. He was actually able to contend with the Nomu somehow, and this would actually alarm Shigaraki. The fact that this kid was able to go toe to toe with his Nomu. Someone or something that was literally designed to be able to kill All Might was being defeated by a child. Well, debatable if you could really call this a child considering. Well, Azuku was basically a mass monster, you could say. That and when he was looking at the appearance of Azuku a bit more, he realized that this kid had some strange similarities to a villain, you could say. He didn't know who it was at first, but then all of a sudden, when he saw Azuku use his telekinesis for some reason in order to rip apart the Nomu, that's when it all clicked into Shigaraki's mind. This kid, at the very least, he wanted to say that this was a kid maybe. This kid was related to Thanos. Now this was a whole other situation he had to deal with. He never thought that he would have to deal with this before. He had always wanted to have, well, Thanos be on his side, but this man was a very, very mysterious person. One day they would just show up, show up to town, wreck the whole city, and literally kill a whole bunch of people. Or basically you could just say, hey, 
walk into a city one day, commit mass murder, then to the point where there's barely any survivors, and then just leave the very next day. You could literally just describe Thanos as that. Just a hulking machine of a man who cared very little for any life whatsoever. So of course it would have been a shock to Shigaraki that this guy even had a kid in the first place. And then this kid also shows that he's incredibly strong as well. It shows that he somehow inherited Thanos' genetics for pure raw strength and power. He wanted to get a better understanding, a better understanding for Thanos. This kid might be the very, the very next best thing if it meant that he could get connected to Thanos somehow. If he couldn't get, if he couldn't get connected to Thanos, well, he still had the kid. He could maybe manipulate the kid into joining his side if he really wanted to. But for right now, it seemed that this kid was going to be a bit difficult. He would have to form a sort of situation that would make Azuku want to join his side, join the League of Villains. If he had Azuku on his side, he could probably take over. He could probably accomplish his goal of tearing down this hero society. Honestly, when it came on to Shigaraki as well, he was a bit of a fan of Thanos, he could not lie. He respected Thanos for the fact that this man didn't necessarily have a specific goal besides death. He just wanted to see the world burn and he understood exactly where Thanos was coming from. Or at least he thought so. He realized that destroying things just felt fun. In this world where people just abandon you for the fact that you have a strange quake or you have a strange appearance, many people will just throw you to the side if you're quakeless. Uh, look, Shigaraki, he had seen everything as a kid. He had seen how cruel the world could be. He was thankful for the fact that All for One gave him a helping hand in order to just build himself back up over the years. And now he had also seen what Thanos was capable of. Now he wanted this kid to join his side as well in order to further his goals. Obviously he wanted Thanos but Azuku wanted to also be... Wait a second. <laughs> but Shigaraki also wanted Azuku. If he could get both father and son, this would be a dream come true for, Sh for Shigaraki. Nothing would be able to stop him after that. Shigaraki would have, well, Kirigiri teleport him out of the USJ after Azuku had literally decimated his Nomu. When Shigaraki told All for One about the whole situation with the Nomu, All for One would show that he was rather surprised. He never thought about this before, the fact that Thanos had a kid. Well, he had heard rumors about there possibly being a uh, kid of Thanos out there, but he never really looked that far into it. He, he just simply thought that these were rumors and nothing more than just that. There was no way Thanos probably had a kid. If he did have a kid, they would have probably been dead a while ago because of, well, the public or maybe Thanos himself. Honestly, when it came on to Thanos, he probably wouldn't even put it past the man to kill his own bloodborne. Oh well, his own offspring. So to hear that this one managed to survive for so long was really surprising and the fact that they were strong as well? The fact that they could literally take down something that was completely designed in order to defeat All Might. Not even just defeat, but to kill All Might. That was surprising to All For One. He wanted to look deeper into this kid now. He wanted to get more files on him. Maybe he could learn about him during the, well, UA Sports Festival. Obviously, this would be when the cameras were rolling on the students the most, and Azuku had never really thought about the UA Sports Festival that much, until the fateful day where a bunch of kids actually gathered around, well, the Class 1A, well, classroom door this would have been after usj obviously either would have been able to go and 
Agatha more heroes in order to come back to USJ to deal with all of the remaining villains and of course All Might would have been among them. He would have swiftly dealt with all of the villains there and down to many of the heroes that were just not able to do it in time. Or basically, <laughs> I'm not making much sense here. Basically All Might managed to come in with the rest of the heroes. While many of the heroes were doing their own thing, being able to defeat many of the villains, All Might would have done his own specialty in terms of being able to speed blitz most of the villains and simply bring them to, well, the frontier USJ all gathered up at once. He was not at all happy about the situation. He felt careless in the situation as well, considering the fact that he could have probably been here at the USJ and, and, and could have avoided all of this if he had just used his time more wisely, considering the fact that he literally only had 3 hours a, a day in order to use his, well, quirk one for all, considering the injury you know, and everything. This would have eventually also hit the news, the uh, fact that Class 1A, you know, first years, were literally dealing with villains. And they somehow managed to defeat the villains as well, or at least a good amount of the villains. They were able to contend with villains while in their first year. The media would have hyped them, the, well, class 1a students and of course this would have also got into many of the other ua um what do you call them again faculty students well <laughs> basically it would have gone on to the whole campus i should say many of the ua students would have also heard about what happened to class 1a and they would feel kind of jealous considering the fact that these guys were getting so much media attention within the very first year all because of the fact that they managed to defeat some villains now many people are lined up at the door when finding out about the ua sports festival and they figured that they could use this moment as a way in order to uh, seek out competition be able to learn more about class 1a and to see just what they're capable of uh, seek out what kind of people that these 1a students are like they even heard that apparently there's a kid that looks like Thanos in there as well maybe they're related somehow or something and they even heard that this kid had a very strong telekinesis quake they were also very gifted in terms of physical strength as well which made many of the kids interested so of course uh, many of the students would be uh, at the door that very day they would have looked inside they would have all crowded around the classroom and a couple of the ua students in class 1a they would have been kind of scared wondering just what was going on only for bakugo to actually explain the whole situation that these kids were literally here to just and figure out just what kind of competition class 1a was going to be for the ua sports festival but he would be a jerk about it and try and force his way through the crowd many of the students would start murmuring about bakugo's rude behavior and one kid with purple hair and a very tired looking face would introduce himself as hitoshi senso he would mention the fact that he came here to see just what class 1A was like and he also had to admit that he was very disappointed seeing what kind of people they were. If, if the rest of class 1A was like Bakugo then he was going to make sure to uh, throw them off of their pedestal. He would have made sure to uh, lift the rug from underneath their feet. He would have made sure that that little spot that class 1A is in right now these people are so comfortable with their positions in life considering the fact that they were able to make into a make it into the hero course and they were able to fight villains he was going to make sure that they were going to be humble during the ua sports festival one way or another many of the class 1a members would be very fearful thinking that they were making enemies way too early in the year but azuk would actually step up at this moment and try to defend his class a lot of the students there would be shocked to see Azuku mainly for his 
feature features a lot of a lot more remembering would begin to occur once everybody saw Azuku for the first time and not just like in a hobby or something they had heard about Azuku before even like on the first day there were some rumors about him but this was the first time that so many people got to see him all at once and they had to admit they had to admit Azuku was a very intimidating looking person not only that but the fact that he was related to Thanos made this 10 times more intimidating 10 times worse for Azuku in terms of like socializing with them as well basically Azuku would go on to say that they were not bad people they simply wanted to uh, go do the Yui sports festival and do their best and whatever Bakugo did and did not reflect the class whatsoever but of course many other uh, students had found this kind of hard to believe at this point apparently now they all had bad blood for well class 1a now 1a needed to prove their worth to many of these students or else they would never get the respect that they deserved with all of these threats that were being made for class 1a this would have, of course encourage the class to train even harder than they would have before they would have gone all out for their training when it came on to well the u.s sports festival they would have been preparing so much to the point where some would even collapse. Azuku would have continued to focus on his physical strength, his quirk, everything. He would have even uh, focused on the en energy projections to the point where he could maybe limit it to the point where, well, it was just a light show. Other times they could literally blast through walls. He wanted to make sure that he could adjust the power and his energy attacks at a moment's notice essentially so for the ua sports festival he wouldn't be afraid of using it whatsoever and that training montage would go by in a flash before they all knew it the ua sports festival would have been well here Now many of the students had to deal with the contenders. The very first part of the sports festival of course involved many of the students having to do this obstacle course race and of course everything would have been videotaped as well. The whole thing was being watched by so many people and many people also began to notice Azuku's features. Many people, many people actually decided to comment on this wondering just what was he doing here was this kid actually related to Thanos and he managed to make it into the hero course this intrigued them many heroes and civilians alike were intrigued by what was happening here the fact that Izuku even existed was probably the most curious part but the fact that he was trying to be a hero also intrigued some Many people at first wanted to assume that Azuku was simply here as some sort of scout for Thanos or something along these lines, but Azuku wouldn't go on to prove that that was not necessarily the case. Throughout the obstacle course, Azuku would do his very best. He would have made sure to stay ahead of the pack throughout most of the, well, obstacle course. Even during the very first part, such as the whole tunnel issue, Azuku, will, Azuku simply would have used his telekinesis in order to fly out of the tunnel ahead of everybody. Many people will comment on how jealous they were of Azuku's quirk, the fact that it's just so convenient at times, just how powerful and, well, useful it is. It had so many different options that he could literally use at a moment's notice. Then Zuku had to deal with some robots. Todoroki would have used his own ice quirk in order to actually deal with some of the robots. This would have, of course cause many of the robots to freeze over but they would not necessarily be all that stable so they would have ended up starting to collapse on each other 
and this would have formed even bigger obstacles for many other students. But Azuku simply would have used his energy beams in order to shoot through any sort of potential target for it while holding him back. Many students would actually be shocked seeing Azuku be able to shoot energy beams out of, well, any part of his body because of the fact that they thought at first he simply had a telekinesis quake, but that proved to not necessarily be the case. It seemed to be more like he had an energy manipulation quake with some sort of connection with telekinesis as well. They wanted to figure out just what sort of quake this guy seemingly had. And even the announcers would comment on this as well. Azawa would mention the fact that Azuku seemingly had a myriad of abilities. It's just that he has yet to show them. Although Azuku so far has shown telekinesis and energy manipulation, Azawa had a feeling that Azuku was going to unlock more abilities as time went on. And of course, Azawa, Azawa would be correct in that statement. Azuku would have gone on to also deal with the tightrope which he would fly over and when it came on to, well, the mines, yeah, he would have just flown over that as well. He never found that to be that big of an issue if he were to simply walk through them as well considering just how heavy he, he is already, but he didn't want to risk it, you could say. Azuku would have managed to make it into first place for this part of the competition. Of course, being able to make it into first place would cause Wazuku to actually end up getting the 10 million head point banned, which caused for many students to look at Azuku as a new target, considering the fact that the kid with the most points for the next competition would automatically be number one, and everybody was gunning for Azuku's 10 million points because of the fact that there was nobody higher than that. 10 million points was incredibly high to the point where like even if you were to gather all the rest of the mm, headbands <laughs> I don't know why I was saying head points this whole time e even if you were to grab all the rest of the headbands from every single student in well this competition it still wouldn't have been enough to overthrow Azuku's 10 million points and there was another issue with the fact that it was only 40 participants in this situation as well. And next thing you know, it would probably go on to be 16 participants right after. If it was like, you only get uh, top 16 or something. Or not top 16. Well, because of the fact that you would have to deal with this. Top 4, it's um, some sort of horse race. Um, basically, you had to have three or four members on one team so it seemed that the max you could probably have is maybe 16 participants going on to the next round afterwards and of course Azuku wouldn't use this opportunity to just uh, gilly gag or just uh, joke around he was going to make a point throughout this whole competition to show that he wasn't here to play games to show that he was in it to win and to show that he was going to be a hero and no one was going to deter him from his goal whatsoever so of course during this race not race but during this situation you could call it during this part of um, the sports festival Azuku would have gathered up a nice group of four of course he would have been the leader of this group but he would have also gotten the likes of Tokoyami for range, and you would have also gotten Ochako for Ochako, mainly because of the fact that she had a zero gravity quake. Although she could probably use it to lift some people up, she didn't necessarily have control over where they went. Azuku could use that to his advantage, though. He could use his telekinesis in order to control where his team member his team members went and he could always just have them come back to him whenever need be he could probably even just have Ochako be maybe the one to hold the 10 million points and he just uses telekinesis on her while she uses a zero gravity quirk on herself 
in order to just uh, float her around. Just make sure that she's out of the way for many competitors. The fact that she would literally be weightless at this point would make it even easier for Izuku to have her duck and dive, swerve around many opponents at a time. This would have been Azuku's main strategy and he decided to get one more, one more member. This wouldn't have necessarily been him actually choosing them, more like them offering to be part of his team and Azuku uh, finding out her voice would have actually decided to accept Hatsume, mainly for the gear, that, that's literally about it. She didn't serve any more purpose than just that. Azuku's plan would have worked almost completely flawlessly because of the fact that barely anybody was able to even reach Ochako in the first place. Anybody that could, Azuku would simply just try and shoot them down for the most part using his energy manipulation quirk. Or, well, ability, ability, you could say. Many people were unable to reach Ochako throughout this fight. And the only ones who were even able to hold a candle to Azuku were probably the likes of, well, Todoroki and Bakugo. Todoroki mainly used an ice staircase in order to try and reach Ochako, but Azuku would quickly shoot this down, shoot down the whole ice staircase. And when it came on to Bakugo, he would have probably try to use his explosion quick in order to. Uh, fire, him, fire himself upwards towards Ochako, hoping to reach her in time. But Izuku would have used his telekinesis in order to push, in order to push Bakugo right back down. He had no problem whatsoever using his telekinesis on more than one person at a time. He just didn't use it like that for the most part, which surprised Bakugo. The fact that Izuku could literally just stomp him mid motion just like that while also holding Ka'uraka in the air like that, moving her around each and every time, simply, just so simple. The fact that Izuku had such a mastery over his telekinesis was kind of concerning for Bakugo. And in the end, Bakugo is only able to, to secure like third place, simply because of the fact that Todoroki was able to get a bit more points than, well, Bakugo, and when it came on to Azuku, of course, his team still had 10 million points by the, by the very end of the game. Shinso was able to get into fourth place through the use of his brainwashing quirk, though, and when it came on to, well, the tournament part, the part where we actually had to fight. Azuku would actually be the very first one to go up, and he would have actually had to face Shinso. Uh, Onjiro would have actually warned Azuku about, about well, Shinso and his quirk though. Onjiro had learned to, well, respect Azuku. He had gained respect for Azuku over this time at school. He had never really judged Azuku because he understood that None of this was necessarily Azuku's fault. Azuku didn't choose who who was going to be his father. He didn't choose to be born or anything. He understood that Azuku was a nice guy. He simply cared for helping others. He just did not want to be compared to his father. That was pretty much about it. But many people, they decided that the son deserved to be, well, judged. They figured that Izuku, despite not doing basically anything, was worth being judged all because of his father. The son shouldn't have to suffer for the father's sins, that's the way Ojiro saw it all. So he didn't necessarily understand why so many people had a vendetta against Izuku, despite the fact that all he really did was just be born. Azuku would actually take into note what Onjiro said and he would try to keep his emotions calm throughout his fight against Shinso. When it came on to his fight against Shinso, obviously the man would go on to taunt Azuku, mention the fact that his father is so evil, the fact that he is literally related to Thanos, literally the worst villain in history, most powerful, biggest bad out there, and the fact that he's still kicking, he might even be watching this right now. 
that's probably the scariest part and Zuku would just hear all of this and not say a word this would irritate Shinso to a certain extent he didn't hate Zuku and, or anything no he just wanted to get on Zuku's nerves so that he could use his quirk properly but Zuku was being incredibly stoic throughout this whole match mainly because of the fact that he had heard all of this before and more throughout his years of living so this didn't really phase him whatsoever instead Azuku would just walk up to Shinso and toss him out he didn't even use his quirk or anything he just used his physical strength in order to throw Shinso out of the ring and many people would be surprised but still cheer for Azuku regardless mainly because of the fact that Azuku actually won this fight and just so simply as well. Azuku's next fight would have been against the likes of Todoroki, and Azuku would have actually had a confrontation with Todoroki's father, Endeavor, during this as well. Endeavor would mention the fact that he was well aware of Azuku's connection to Thanos, and frankly, he did not really care. Uh, for his connection, all he was concerned about was the fact that Izuku was most likely the best person to give his show to the best fight. He wanted Izuku to go all out against out by the station, so uh, he wanted Izuku to go all out against Shoto Todoroki, his son. He wanted him to push him to use the right side of his quirk or maybe left side, I don't really remember what side, basically the fire part of his quirk. And the boy had been so stubborn for so long when it came on to using his father's side as a quirk, he much preferred using his mother's side, but he figured out Izuku would push Shoto to the brink of literally being able or literally being forced to use his fire if he wished to even win against Azuku. And he had also mentioned that, well, Shoto was especially designed in order to take down the likes of All Might and Thanos. So he was really hoping that this would be Shoto's wake up call for just how far he ranked even after training so hard. Maybe, just maybe, he would have a chance against Azuku if he used the fire side in conjunction with his ice. He wanted to see just how far they could go. And Azuku would have realized that this was pretty much all Endeavor seemed to care about. Azuku would have just kept his mouth shut, not even wanting to really engage with Endeavor right now. Instead, he just wanted to go on to test himself against Shoto. And he wanted to see just how far Shoto was willing to go in order to win the competition. And sure enough, the fight would be legendary, you could say. Azuku wouldn't use uh, all of his abilities just yet. Instead, he would simply use his physical strength alone in order to blow back against most of um, the ice. And Shoto would literally be making ice breaks. He would be making walls of ice at a time and Azuku would simply be pushing back against the ice via his fists. He would have used his fists alone, his physical strength alone in order to crack the ice, in order to break the ice multiple times over. The audience would be stunned at Azuku's pure raw strength each and every time. And the fact that I didn't seem that Azuku was slowing down either was what impressed him even more. Many heroes already wanted Azuku on the list. Many heroes wanted Azuku to intern with them. They figured that this could be a form of publicity for them if they really wanted to as well. Taking the son at Thanos, making sure that he became a proper hero, this would probably elevate their status as a hero as well, technically speaking. Many people. Many heroes uh, having Azuku on their side as an absolute win. So many of them would be amazed just watching the fight. Shoto would be pushed to the brink of exhaustion. And Shoto would mention the fact that Azuku was holding back this whole match. He had yet to use his telekinesis and he had yet to use his, well, energy manipulation. 
His only question was why, to which Izuku would explain that uh, he had a similar question. Why had Todoroki had yet to use the fire side of his quake? You know, considering the fact that he was related to Endeavor and all, to which Shoto explained that he would never use that side of his quake. Azuku would explain that, hey, if you want to hold back, not give it your all, that's on you. I'm just not going to go all out against the person who, re who refuses to give it his all as well. Why do I have to give 100% effort to somebody who's, on who's only going 50%? I would much rather go up against somebody that likes, uh, well... Uh, I'm not even going to say any names, no. I would much rather go and go up against uh, like a general education student uh, with a pretty weak quake, but they use it at 100% effort. They use it at 100% capacity. They use their quake to the fullest extent of their imagination. He respected those type of people, the people that would give it their all despite the fact that they had weak quakes, rather than somebody with a very strong quake like Todoroki, but they only used 50% of it, they refused to give it their all, all because of some bad blood, some bad history or something. Look at Izuku, he is literally the son of the worst villain in history, but he has made the decision to give it his all in each of his fights. So for Todoroki to literally only use 50% of his quake, uh, use only half of his quake, was literally like spitting in Izuku's face right now, which is why he refused to use the full extent of his quake as well. Izuku was technically only really going like 33% you could say because well he wasn't even using this quake throughout all of this match and Todoroki would realize that as well and he would flare up his arm he would use his ice side as well use them in order to create well an expansion of air you could say enough to blow both of them back but Zuku, he would still stand strong. He would have used his telekinesis in order to keep himself firm on the ground. While Todoroki, he would be blown back from his own attack against Azuku. And in the end, well, Todoroki would have lost the fight because of the fact that he went out of bounds. None of the matches after that would be nearly as spectacular as the one that they had seen between Izuku and Todoroki, or well, Midoriya and Todoroki, if we're just going by last names. But, of course, when it came on to the fight against Bakugo, many people were excited to see this, mainly because of the ferocious nature of Bakugo himself, and the whole issue of Izuku, him, him having a more calm demeanor, you could say. Despite all of the ridicule he had received over the years, many people were actually beginning to adore Izuku throughout the sports festival for everything that he had displayed so far and it seemed that he was not slowing down whatsoever. It seemed as if this man was just a walking tank and many heroes were excited to see this boy's come up. They figured that he was going to be a great hero one day if he decided to keep on the right track. So of course when he came on to the fight against Bakugo, there were a lot of expectations. At least for Izuku, when he came on to Bakugo, many people didn't expect that he was going to win, which upset Bakugo to no end. He was greatly annoyed hearing everybody praise Izuku, and in his mind he was thinking that, hey, this is the son of a villain, why does he deserve more praise than me? Why is it that he gets more praise than I do? He understood that he wasn't necessarily the strongest now, but he still wanted to give it his all against Suzuku. Maybe, just maybe, he would be able to luck out this time. Unfortunately, once again, fate would be cruel to Bakugo, mainly because of the fact that throughout the whole fight, he wasn't even able to get close to Azuku. He had used his explosions as a propulsor or a repulsor, whatever you want to call it. Basically as a way to propel himself forward 
and uh, close the distance between himself and Izuku. But Izuku would use his telekinesis each and every time in order to simply push Bakugo back. Bakugo would be angered by this and he would try to fire a wave of explosions at Izuku. He had even developed a, a, a technique of sorts, how it's an impact, in order to make his way over to Izuku. And once again, Izuku would simply just use his telekinesis throughout the whole fight in order to push Bakugo back. Even during his Howitzer impact, Izuku was able to stop it midway by holding Bakugo's body in place. Although Bakugo tried to use his explosions, it didn't seem to work. All because of the fact that this telekinetic hold that was on his body, it was just too strong even when he used his explosions in order to give himself some form of movement in order to break away from the telekinetic force field around him. No matter what he did, for some reason, Izuku still had more control over the whole situation than he did and of course in the end, Bakugo would just be sent flying out of bounds which left Bakugo feeling kind of empty this whole time he thought that this was going to be a match for the centuries but no all he ended up receiving was nothing really he was treated like a joke throughout this whole match at least when it came on to Izuku versus Todoroki Izuku actually decided to use his strength use his telekinesis, use all of this and that, but when it came on to Bakugo for some reason, he got nothing besides just a little bit of telekinesis for crying out loud. Even when it came on to the fight against Ida, Bakugo was able to recognize that Izuku was actually keeping very close watch of Ida's movements, and he would even try and block most of the movements as well instead of simply trying to use his telekinesis the whole time. When it came on to Bakugo for some reason, Azuku just decided to go easy on him. He didn't even really give Bakugo a proper fight, and this greatly annoyed Bakugo to no end. It seemed as if this whole fight was just going to be, well, Azuku stalling. It seemed as if the whole fight was literally just that. Azuku stalling and it seemed that was going to be the case for most matches against him as well if this was going to be the case well Bakugo figured that he would have to train e train even harder in order to show that he was not some sort of stepping stone to show that he was worth being taken seriously at the end of this points festival Everyone would end up receiving their medals, or at least everyone that managed to make it onto the podium. Azuku would have, would have accepted his, well, medal graciously, while Bakugo, he wouldn't be all that happy about having second place. When it came on to the likes of Ida and Tokoyami, they pretty much accepted their place on the board for the most part. They understood that, well, this was just their place, or at least that's how it was supposed to go. You see, Tokiyami was there, but Ida wasn't for some odd reason. Asuku was confused as well as to why. Ida wouldn't be here at such a um, prestigious ceremony. This was kinda out of character for Ida to literally skip out on something like this. So, Azuku became curious, and his curiosity led him to another thing. He would eventually end up finding out the root cause of it all, and this was, well, his brother. Apparently, uh, well, Ingenium, or Tensei, or Tensei Ida, um, Ida's, well, Tenya Ida's, well, older brother, he apparently had a run-in, a run-in with, not Stain, not, not the hero killer, no, honestly, that would have been a whole lot better than who he actually did run into. 
You see, he ran into the likes of Daniels. Needless to say, it didn't end pretty for Tensei whatsoever. Tensei, as soon as he saw Thanos, figured that he needed to flee from the scene immediately. There was no way that he was going to be able to take on this guy, at least on his own anyways. He knew his limits. He knew that he wasn't the strongest hero, but something that he figured that he had against most people was speed. This proved to not be the case against Thanos though. Although Tensei wanted to flee the scene, wanted to run away so badly, his heart was literally beating in his head at this point. He could hear his heartbeat in his head just pounding. His, it felt like blood was starting to come, come through his throat. Where fill up his lungs and everything. Basically, uh, everything that was going through Tensei's mind was just danger, danger. Get out of here as fast as possible. Do you want to live? Do you want to live? But despite all of that, despite his adrenaline rush and everything, no matter what he did, he just could not escape Thanos. At every corner, Thanos was there, and Tensei he could not escape him. In the end. He would have found out that Thanos was simply toying with him as if he was some sort of food and well and, and well Thanos was like a kid you could say basically Thanos was, Thanos was the type of kid to play with this food or something along these lines or maybe he saw Tensei as a toy as some as like some sort of action figure that kids would usually play with at an early age but with every kid in growing up well you eventually outgrow well your action figures your toys and it seemed that Thanos quickly got bored of chasing Ingenium and messing around with him messing, messing around with his fear and he decided to just end it in the end, Tensei, he would have still died the hero, or at least that's how many people perceived it. Ida would have been unfortunate enough to have to find out what happened to his brother during the sports festival. Not only that, but he would also have to attend his brother's funeral. This grief struck him hard and on the next day of course he would have given Azuka the cold shoulder he had tried to be nice before he had always imagined that you should not blame the son for the father's actions or for the father's sins but just looking at Azuku just reminded him too much of Thanos and it made him and it made it just very hard for him because he knew that at any moment he just wanted to punch Thanos in the face. He knew that he wasn't going to get far if he did that though. He knew that he was too weak to ever engage Thanos in a serious situation. But he would be lying if he didn't say that he... he basically, he would be lying if he said that he didn't feel like tearing Thanos anew every single time he saw Azuku and needless to say he didn't want to give the sort of emotions that he, he was feeling at this moment towards Azuku he didn't want to basically say that he hated everything that Azuku stood for he knew that it wasn't Azuku's fault but he just did not want to be reminded of Thanos he needed his own space right now and Azuku he will be left to his own devices for the most part Azuku would have found out what happened to Ingenium and he would have felt bad for Ida knowing that he was going through the ringer right now going through the toughest part of his life right about now you literally lost your brother to his father to Azuku's father and Azuku of course knew that well the main reason why Ida was being so silent was because of that very fact. Because of the fact that it was Thanos who killed 
while his older brother This also meant another thing though Thanos, he was close It wasn't like he was just in any particular part of Japan anymore No, he was um, probably like a couple of bus rides away or something This meant everything to Azuku Maybe if he trained hard enough He would be able to fight off his father Maybe he would be able to help Ida get revenge for his brother. Maybe he might be able to sell the score. Maybe, just maybe. He didn't know why he was thinking this so he knew that he was still pretty frail, pretty weak in comparison to, um, well, his father. He knew that when it came on to fighting Thanos, fighting Thanos, you will have to be the top of the top, the absolute, which even the absolute does probably more so along the lines of people like All Might, Endeavor, yeah, and well, maybe Best Genius as well. Those type of people would usually be the ones at the very top uh, contending against Thanos. But, Azuku was just the first year in high school. He wasn't all that sure about whether he would be able to actually hold a candle to his father right now. But, it was worth a shot. He figured that he needed to get stronger and this was exactly what he focused most of his days on. Basically, in just trying to become stronger physically and in terms of how he used his well abilities as well most of the time Zuku would be training his physical strength by going back down to Dagobah beach picking up a lot of junk and then also using the school equipment as well the school gym all of these sorts in order to boost his well physical capabilities the way that he could handle stress and the way that he used his quake he needed to evolve that as well because he noticed though over time that the way he used his telekinesis was rather base was rather basic. It's just that he had a large extent of it. It's just that his telekinesis was very potent when it came on to his well energy manipulation you could say or energy or energy projection abilities. Those were pretty subpar as well. He needed to study more about what he could do with his abilities. And pretty much the only thing was the only thing that was probably really going for Azuku at this moment was his tough skin. His durability was completely off of the charts. When I say that I mean probably comparable to that of a prime all might in terms of just how much damage he could take all at once. And even then, Azuku questioned whether or not he had a healing factor or a regeneration ability. It didn't seem that far out to the question at this point. Something that would also be focused on around this time would of course be the internships. In order to really start with this internship program, even if it was just for a week, it was going to have to start with the kids actually selecting their names and which heroes they would want to uh, be associated with work under for that week whoever could give them the best experience azuku azuku couldn't really come up with any good name so he just went with his regular name for now azuku since it was just a placeholder for whatever name that he could think of in the future that actually sounded rather heroic. He wasn't about to use his father's, his father's name either, Thanos. That would probably just bring even more fear into people's hearts. As far as when it came on to which hero he decided to intern with. He wasn't really all that sure to be honest. Out of all the heroes, maybe he might just go with somebody akin to Death Arms. 
do too well his physical strength. Or maybe somebody along the lines of best genius could work better. He wasn't exactly sure who could necessarily be a good match for his set of abilities. All he knew was that some hero wanted to apparently work with him, which surprised Suzuku to say the very least. He never really thought that any hero would really be interested in having him be part of the agency like that. He thought that most of the heroes actually feared him or hated him considering his association with Thanos. But then again, it could just be a publicity stunt or maybe, just maybe, the hearts were finally begin to, beginning to change. After seeing Azuku show that, well, he wanted to be a hero, the fact that he got into UA, and the fact that he dominated the sports festival, that might have been what left people having... Okay. That might have been the lasting impression that he needed. That might have been what put the nail in the coffin for some people. Others may have still needed some convincing, but this sports festival that happened and him getting into UA, of course, could have been a step in the right direction. And of course, Azuku had all sorts of hopes for that. In the end, Azuku would simply go for Endeavor due to just pure simplicity's sake. And ever was the number two hero, he was known for having a lot of physical strength even though that wasn't necessarily his quirk. His quirk was Hellflame, and the way that he used his quirk was rather interesting considering the fact that, hey, he could basically use energy projection. Although, although when it came on to Azuku and the way that he used his energy manipulation, it wasn't just limited to fire, his was just pure plasma you could say, that was being shot out, while when it came on to Endeavor, his focused solely on fire, but hey, fire is a form of energy so Azuku could technically learn from him in the end. And that's exactly what would happen, he would actually be with Todoroki. Shoto Todoroki to be more specific and they would be at Endeavor's agency there Azuku would learn from Endeavor how to better manage his energy project projection abilities or just the consumption of his energy levels in general he would have also done, done a lot of sparring with Endeavor and Shoto as well. These three ended up having an understanding of where each other were in terms of strength. Azuku was at the top spot in terms of strength. This was something that actually surprised Endeavor. He knew that he was the son of Thanos and all, but he never expected for Azuku to be this strong. And then the fact that Azuku also displayed all these abilities, energy projection, uh, telekinesis and he also had pure raw strength that was comparable to maybe All Might at this point uh, an injured All Might but an All Might nonetheless this was actually concerning for Endeavor, considering the fact that Shoto was also specifically born in order to take down Thanos. But now, Thanos' son was here, and Endeavor was realizing that his strength was no match for Azuku, and he had yet to even hit his prime. They could only imagine what it would be like to genuinely fight the real Thanos. That's something that petrified. That's something that honestly petrified and never to the point where he would put their training to a harsher extent than usual. Harsher than even what Shoto was used to throughout his childhood. 
all because of this sort of fear that Endeavor had for Thanos. Thanos wouldn't be the only one that they had to deal with though. Another person that was on Endeavor's radar was the hero killer Stain. He was a lesser villain but a villain nonetheless. He was a rather influential villain at this point considering the fact that he was going around killing heroes mention, mentioning the fact that they weren't worthy of calling themselves heroes and this interested Endeavor although he was not about to try and square up against Xanos Stain could probably give him some good publicity he figured that when it came onto this guy, maybe, just maybe, there was a chance that he could defeat him. And maybe, actually, give Shoto some experience. If the two of them were to fight Stain together, then this could actually be the moment where Shoto actually developed his skills more. He was born with a quirk that dealt with its weaknesses properly. It was meant to be able to handle exhaustion from heat and hypothermia he should have been able to push his quirk to its very limits but the boy wanted to be selfish over the years not understanding just how poignant he really was and here they were now now they needed to get all the character was possible now that it seemed as if Shoto was getting more and more used to using his fire side. Yeah, I'm honestly just going to end it here. I've been trying and trying to make this like a full on movie, but it just never seems to work somehow. And I keep on having Roblox with this story for some reason. And yeah, I know y'all are tired of me. Um, what do you call it again? Uh, I'm canceling what ifs, never finishing them. And then, like, I genuinely felt like I wanted to do this what if for so long. And then, when I finally get on to doing it, next thing you know, I just don't know. At first, I was excited. Then the views went down. It didn't do that well. And then, I, and then I get a cold. You guys don't care. I'm just tired of this what if. I'm probably not going to finish this one. And I'm honestly getting kind of tired of MHA with this as well. But it seems to do really well on this channel. So that's why I am moving on to another channel that I call Apollo's Domain. So if you guys are interested in seeing other content besides like uh, My Hero Academia and I, I don't know, High School DxD, I'm going to be uploading on that channel real soon or like in the next month or two. And these are going to be like uh, One Piece, Naruto. I wanna say Bleach, but I'm gonna be honest, no, nah. Not yet. I don't think I'm ready for Bleach just yet. Uh, I, basically, I'm just going to try and do the anime on that channel. I might even do like some Tokyo Ghoul but if there as well. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this channel. I'll probably still upload on this channel from time to time, but I'm probably going to focus more on the newer channel because i feel that one might just have more potential but yeah that's all i have to really say for for right now guys it is your boy king tight next signing out peace Rifty.